Rocks go. Go. LD is go. MD. MD is go. LD, verify go to initiate terminal count. LC, you are go to initiate terminal count. Copy. Houston, you are go for TLI. Over. So we're back and we have a launch right off the bat. Um, I've gotten a couple contracts to set up a surface base on Ike and add to my surface base on Minmus. So we're going to see a lot of uh, a lot of launches in this episode and a lot of infrastructure building. This is a new rev of my uh, my SLS in game, and it involves a five engine core, a rather large ten meter fairing, and it is targeted at reusability. The tank in the middle separates from the engine section and the upper stage at upper stage set. And then we have this little engine package uh, that is able to return home with a heat shield on the front. The uh, decoupler didn't really come off here, but it seems to be uh, good enough to work. So I'll take what I can get. Overall, this is the most expensive part of the entire vehicle. So if I can save only a section, this makes the absolute biggest dent in my uh, expenses per mission. So this is, uh, this is a huge deal to be able to bring back each time. And I don't have to change any of the launch profile or waste time on a boost back burn. And just look at that. Oh wow, that is good. 101,000 out of a 300,000 launch. So we got another one going up. This is a ore processor. It is a common design to the one I had placed on Minmus before, but without a uh, nuclear reactor. Um, this one is intended to go to Ike and help set up the surface base there. Meanwhile, on Duna, we have a crew departing the uh, outpost that's being set up there, and they are going to return back up to the orbiting station. This is probably one of the last times I'll be using this lander because it is uh, uh, not the best at getting to and from uh, the surface. It's just barely enough, but um, it, uh, it's a little hard to do the landing and control with usually. Come in on a little sporty docking approach here. And right afterwards, we're gonna have Hercules launch and deliver another batch of ore to the station. This will help refuel all of our hydrogen that we're storing in the tanks in orbit and uh, get a return flight to Kerbin ready to go. There's about 100 tons of ore on the vehicle right here, so it is a handsome amount to be able to convert into propellant. It's a little wobbly, but uh, docking procedures work just fine with it. After converting a ton of ore into liquid hydrogen, we can then reseparate Axum and its associated lander because our contract is dependent on getting both of them back to Kerbin and then also getting that lander back to the surface. At this point, we're ready to do spin-up, get artificial gravity running in the ship, and uh, that allows the crew to have some G on the way home. 
and because we're following this mission, uh, it's able to return back to Kerbin, and uh, that happens it, while we are staging all those previous launches. Uh, there's no return capability built in, so we're going to have to send that up as well. This is a modified Orion. It has an extended cabin in the back to be able to fit the larger amount of crew on board Axum. It arrives empty and then returns full. We're using an ICPS basically to uh, boost it up and uh, it's gonna go meet up with Axum. After collecting some crew, it's a pretty standard re-entry, just with the uh, um, heat shield on the back. And then we get into the real meat of the program from here for a long time from now. We're gonna have our engine pod come in and return. And then we have a new spacecraft class now available for use. This is Songhai, the first of a whole new fleet of nuclear spacecraft using a nucleothermal gas core uh, engine. This is like super advanced, but um, is a very real world concept. Um, it, uh, it would be a game changer in spaceflight. It has an ISP of over 1800, uh, which really makes it like a showstopper in comparison to a lot of uh, electric technologies out there. And the thrust on it is, is pretty unmatched. So I'm able to move this absolutely massive spacecraft uh, to and from the outer planets and uh, Duna. So this is intended for long mileage, long-term operation, and we'll be cruising on these for a while. And because we don't want to just have one, there's a separate one, Molly, which will operate as a crew taxi and carry less cargo, but focus on crew. It is a common core design, common launch system, but a little bit more performance. Molly's launched autonomously without a crew on board and we'll rendezvous with a drop tank. This drop tank allows extended burns and heavier cargo on the initial outset from Kerbin. With the drop tank, I've paired an additional launch of a refinery, a hydrazine shipment, a drill set, and a power plant. This all-in-one refinery and drill is going to be what we'll be using going forward for colonizing the solar system. And because we didn't leave with crew, we're going to go pick them up at Minmus. In addition to picking up the crew, we're also picking up the Icarus lander, which is a sky crane system able to deliver cargo to the surface. And we'll return to get more crew.
While Molly's being set up, we also have a contract on Minmus to expand our surface space. So we're going to be looking into new launch vehicle technologies to boost the reusability of the program and as much of the return on investment as we can. This vehicle carries a small extended stage and an agriculture dome that we've been tasked with to go deliver. We have a lot of contracts active right now worth a lot of money. So this will be uh, the first heavy hitter that we'll be doing in this episode. The base element is on wheels, similar to uh, the, uh, the NASA excursion vehicle that's currently being looked at in a, a JSC. Um, they're able to pivot in all sorts of directions, so it's able to drive up, mate with the base, and uh, it can basically drive in any direction, and then I can kick it up off the wheels onto jacks. I didn't show it here, but I also had a delivery of a hydrogen super tanker that's able to deliver large amounts of liquid hydrogen up into low minimus orbit. It allows a direct path from our surface base, producing our propellants to our orbiting platforms that need those propellants. It has extra performance so that it can handle the round trip of delivery and return where those outermost tanks, the larger ones, are the storage tanks, and these innermost two are running on the, uh, the, the takeoff and landing system. Once the window lines up, Songhai departs for Ike and delivering its base element. Around the same time, we're about ready with Molly. We filled up using the super tanker. All of our crew is on board and we're ready to deploy the habitation ring. The ring takes a great deal of engineers on board, so we need to slowly accelerate out of min miss gravity well get into a solar orbit, and then we'll burn hard to try and reach Duna. This saves a lot of propellant because we only have to do a small kick to escape the moon, and then we can burn again to circularize away from the Kerbin system. There's limited capacity in this tank though, so we're gonna need to drop it once we've completed that section of the burn. This is similar to the Copernicus and one of the earlier episodes. But instead, we're doing a transposition and docking here where the drop tank is completely severed out of the vehicle. This leads to a far more significant mass savings. Now Molly and her crew are on their way to Duna with the rest of the fleet, where we'll all converge in the next episode.